and good afternoon. I was born into an entrepreneur's family. My parents ran a small brick and mortar business. They actually sold tools to floras. And um, we had lunch together every single day. And my, my dad always, uh, over lunch, talked about their customers, about the purchases they made, whether they were paying or not, but also what kind of people they were and what problems they had in life. So in a way, their customers were always at their kitchen table. And uh, while I was personally still dreaming about becoming a professional musician, I think I learned quite a lot in that time. Today, I'm here as the founder and CEO of Babbel, the world-leading app for language learning. Let me tell you about it. Babbel helps everybody to learn a language the easy way and to get conversational very fast. We care a lot that we are on the same page with our customers, and that is why we have them pay only as long as they use the app through a subscription. And uh, that model helps uh, us to keep aligned to the people that actually matter. And uh, it seems to work for them. And uh, it clearly works for us, and uh, it is a profitable business model, which is a nice thing to have. Now, usually, we don't share a lot of our numbers, but Marco really presses on that. So uh, let me give you an impression of where the business stands today. We have 400 people, mostly here in Berlin, probably in New York, in our office there. They come out of 36 different nations. Uh, so very diverse team. We are selling language learning worldwide, but we have 13 key markets. That those are markets where we have uh, country managers and localized efforts. We sell subscriptions between five and twelve dollars a month. Um, up to now, we only raised around 33 million U.S. dollars in financing, and since uh, the business is working pretty well. Um, we're sitting on most of that still. Um, the market for language learning worldwide is uh, 60 billion US dollar worth. The market for cloud-based language learning is the growing part in that, and it's said to be around 6 billion within the next five years. And the analysts who came up with those numbers don't know our plans, how to extend that marketing further. So uh, these numbers are important for us, and uh, uh, we really care. But the main thing that we care for is that are actually our customers. And there's a lot of them. Since the beginning of the year, it's more than one million paying subscribers in our app. That's a great thing for us. It's a great milestone. One million people paying to learn language on Babel and uh, uh, sticking to that pretty long. And that number, of course, is growing and has grown since the beginning of the year already. Now, while that is a great thing, it does come with challenges like everything else. So in a consumer business where you have so many people out there, it's very, very hard to really keep conversation with them and keep them on top of your mind as people. And what happens very often is that you get in what you could call instrument flight. So you fly by the numbers. Customers become numbers in Excel sheets, points on graphs, but not people anymore, not people that you work for and that you feel you're reporting to. And that is a danger of every co uh, consumer business at scale. And uh, we're struggling with that. We're fighting that in every conceivable way. This is Joe from our Customer Insights team. She invites customers to the office every day. And she's one of 60 people at Babel who, have, who all day do nothing else but talk to customers and obsess with 
what they do, what they want, and so on. A big par part of those 60 are our customer services team, which is outstanding in the industry. They have a customer satisfaction rate north of 90%, which is absolutely remarkable. But what we care about is that the customer knowledge and what, what we know about the customers and what they want gets back into the company and we can work on that and iterate on that. And for me personally, what really makes my day as a CEO, what I really love is the moment when an overhear colleagues talk about single customers. Anecdotal, yes, but if over lunch in our kitchen, my colleagues talk about people, I get really excited because I think that is the core of our business. It is about people. Now, let me talk about the people I work for. This, for instance, is Andrea. He's uh, 25. He learns three languages with Babel. That sounds kind of OK or uh, uh, average. But this guy had a brain operation. And among other things, that brain operation uh, made it very hard for him to remember words. So the unique approach of our app, of Babel, helped him to not only learn English, but also progress pretty fast in Spanish and Portuguese. For us, that was something we were really, really happy about. This is Johnny. I'm not sure whether he is our oldest user, but this guy is 100 years old. He's learning English to talk to his great-granddaughter, who is in New York. And uh, he's very happy about it, and we're speaking to him. He's an author. He recently sent us his newest book before it was published. This is Cecilia, originally from Argentina. She currently lives in Taiwan. After learning eight languages, she decided to start learning German. And Babel was the tool that she thought is the best she can use. And she's one of our happy users, one of one million customers, and uh, it's great to be in conversation with her. Now, while our users are happy about us, we're obsessing about what they think about it, our progress is uh, uh, noticed. So um, Fast Company magazine, for instance, named us around among the top 50 most innovative companies in the world. And in the education space, they said, we are the most innovative company overall, period. That does make us proud. And Tech Tour Growth 50 said, we're among the top 50 fastest growing companies in Europe, which again makes us proud. And I hope that they know that better than we do and that they have a good basis for that. Now, while that is all fine and great, um, when we started out, we, we financed the business 18 months on our own. Why did we do that? Because we wanted to obsess about the product and our customers, not about investors. And even today, when people join the company from other tech companies, they are amazed how little we care about how happy our investors are and how much we care how, much, how happy our users are. And the funny thing for me is, our investors actually love that. So uh, uh, that's a, a great thing for us. And they love that because they believe in what our mission is. Millions and millions of people in the world want to learn a language, way more than actually are doing that. And we're only scratching the surface with, which, uh, with what we're doing in the moment. And I've been saying this last year here at NOAA. I've said it three years ago, actually nine years ago when we started. This is only the beginning. This is only the, the beginning, and with the, the best, I learned that uh, around Noah, the best is yet to come. So thank you. Go learn a language. Tell us your story so that we can talk about you at our kitchen table. I'm Marcus Witte from Babel. Thank you.